Hey there, everybody. How are all of you doing today? This is Dr. G. I'm just getting set up. One second here. All right. Let's see. Instagram's happy now. All right. So, hey everybody, this is Dr. Brooke Goldner from Goodbye Lupus, and it is Wednesday. So, I'm here to hang out with you today to help you with your happiness, your health, uh, your life nutrition, whatever I can help you with, I'm here to help you. This is my public service that I do as often as I can, which is usually every Wednesday because I want to give back and make sure everybody who needs the help can get it. Now, this is live streamed over Instagram and Facebook page and my Smoothie Shred group and YouTube. So there's a lot of questions that are going to go in the comments. I answer as many as I can, especially uh, if there's ones that I haven't seen before. Someone might even skip the line um, because we are doing this every Wednesday, but I try to get to them in order, but I go back and forth between the different places. Um, so hopefully you get good information. I appreciate all of you who say you come every week. It's a great honor to me and thank you for your time. Um, can't act as your doctor. This is the internet. I can't see you. So please don't take anything as medical advice. Make sure that you go see your doctor and all of that good and reasonable stuff. So I always like to start out Wednesdays with some coaching or teaching that uh, people find helpful, uh, generally speaking, so I can help all of you uh, who maybe can't meet with me for an appointment or do a rapid recovery program with me. And then I move into the questions. And one that's been coming up lately and obviously because of what my family has been going through. Um, for those of you who don't know, we recently lost my uh, younger son, Alex, in an accident uh, back in December, um, a few days before his 11th birthday. So it's something very difficult that my family's been going through together. And uh, I do get asked a lot, especially by private clients, how are you doing? So most appointments I get start with, how are you doing? And I say, I'm, I'm doing as good as I can. I'm actually, I'm doing, I'm doing well, you know, and like, wait, how, like what's going on? And so one of the things that I teach them that I hope I can teach you literally as I'm doing it. So when I'm teaching you how to reverse lupus, I reversed lupus 18 years ago. I have been lupus free for 18 years after being diagnosed with it 30 years ago. So I'm teaching you stuff I've been maintaining for a long time. What I'm going to teach you right now is what I'm doing in real time. And maybe it can help some of you. Uh, what I have seen is I've had a lot of clients who are hanging on to a lot of excuses and reasons why they couldn't be happy or go after their life, who now look me in the eye and say, my excuses are done and I'm going to do it now. And so if I can be an inspiration to help you save your life or save people that you actually can save in your life, then I'm glad that at least anything I'm going through can help you be better. So here's the reality. And... I know this both as a trauma specialist. I've been helping people overcome trauma for over 20 years and also myself going through trauma recently um, is that you have the ability to experience more than one emotion at the same time. A lot of times people have this belief or idea that you can only feel one thing at a time. So if you're happy, you're happy. If you're depressed, you're depressed. If you're you know, if you're anxious, you're anxious. There's really only room for feeling one certain way at a time. And that's not actually the case, thank goodness. We have the ability to feel multiple things at the same time. Sometimes it takes extra focus though. If you're happy, then great. You don't need to look for ways to balance that out with some depression or anxiety, no. But if you're struggling, if you're hurt, if you're mourning, if you're depressed, if you're anxious, then you do have to do the work to reach for the other moods because you can do all of them, okay? You just need to do the work to do that. So what I mean by that is, for example, um, I am absolutely have a part of me that is completely devastated, 100%. Like, <laughs> there's no changing that. There is a piece of my heart that's ripped open and bleeding, definitely. And... I still have the rest of my heart, which has gratitude for everything I still have. I have true love in my life. I have a beautiful, amazing son who's about to turn 15. Oh my goodness, at the end of the week. I have purpose. I save lives every single day. Uh, I help people get off dialysis, get off the lung transplant list. Um, 
get jobs, get healthy relationships, get purpose, get happiness. And my purpose is so strong. I have purpose in helping you right now. And what I have makes me happy. So I am both happy because of my focus on my gratitude for everything I have, while also having a part of me that is, is very sad and in mourning. I have both. And that's why I can look at you and smile with a sincere smile, because I am happy while also being sad. And the way I've come to describe it, you know, I have an analogy for everything, is that sometimes pain, you know, life, life, there's pain in life sometimes. And sometimes pain can be like if you're out in the ocean and it's grabbing your foot, trying to pull you under the water, right? That's what pain does, whether it's physical pain or emotional pain. Sometimes it grabs you by the foot and it tries to pull you under, right? And what many people only know how to do is keep swimming. They're just like, I'm fine. I just got to get through it. And they just keep swimming, right? They're swimming and they're trying and they just get up every day and they work and they take care of their families and they do stuff, but they feel like they're about to drown at every moment because all they can feel is the pull of the pain pulling you down. That's pulling you into the abyss of depression. Okay. Gratitude is like an inflatable lifeboat that you can hold on to so that you can stay afloat and not have to fight for every minute of it. My gratitude is what keeps me above water. It kept me feeling lucky when I was on di I was on dialysis, please. When I was on chemotherapy, that helped me avoid dialysis. When I was on chemotherapy and taking seven pills a day and feeling like garbage every day from 16 to 28, the gratitude for what I still had made me feel lucky in spite of my illness. My illness was a piece of my life. It was a piece of pain that pulled at me. My disease, right, was a part of me that pulled on me and, and made it hard. Sometimes it made it hard to just move and do normal things that other people could easily do. But the gratitude I felt for everything I had, and sometimes I had to focus really hard to think of it all for the family I had, that I had a good brain, that I could make, that I, I loved to, to laugh, my favorite show, my favorite friends, um, anything to do with Star Trek, right? Whatever it was, like I, I would, I would just obsessively think about everything that made me feel happy to be me, and that suddenly made it so I wasn't just struggling to be good. I was good. I could hold on to that and feel good and rest and enjoy my life. And it's what I'm doing now. I have a part of me that hurts, and yeah, sometimes. That comes up like a wave over the boat and I'm going to cry and feel it. And I'm holding on to so much. I have so much that I'm intensely grateful for. And when I hold that, I can feel joy, real joy. I can laugh. I can sing. I learned from my grandmother to dance when you hear music. And I do. And so all of those things make it so I can be happy to be me and happy to live this life even though now I have this terrible pain that also exists as well. So if this is something that, that you've never thought of before, if you tend to be pulled down by depression, if you tend to focus on your hurt, if you focus on your pain, if you focus on loss, it makes you want to just let go and stop swimming, doesn't it? Just sink, let it all go. But if you realize that that's just one piece of life, that sometimes it does tug on you, but that there's so much more to hold on to, then you can keep going. And sometimes you do have to swim. Sometimes it's hard to reach for that hope. You know, the first couple of weeks I was swimming. I was swimming and crying. That was just life for a while. Right. But now I, I reached, I was able to reach it again pretty quickly. You know, I, I went to see a grief counselor because I'm like, Hey, I think I'm doing well, but I want to see a professional. She started asking me why I was doing so well. She's like, tell me about trauma resilience. How are you doing this well? And so I told her what I was doing. And she's like, that's awesome. You don't need me. <laughs> so, but if I do, I will. But the point is, the more you build up that gratitude list in your head obsessively every day, the easier it gets, the more, more you're able to float. And the other thing you need to do is do things that make you feel good. Reach for the, neuro, the, the endorphins, the uh, neurochemistry that makes you feel better. 
I made sure that even when I felt my worst, I did something every day. We got out and walked. I spent time with my family. We, uh, we went away together as a family in our grief to try to see Christmas lights on and, and be around people who were singing and be around happiness and remember all we have and allow ourselves to be grateful. And it's why we're able to move to the place we are now where, I mean, I'm still counting the days, seven weeks yesterday, but where we could be in a dramatically better place less than two months later. The pain is still there. It will be. I don't expect it to, to go anywhere, right? But there is also joy and gratitude and purpose and passion and love. And that's how we stay whole. There is a teaching I do in my rapid recovery group. Those of you in the group now, it's coming. But uh, the short version of it is there's a practice in Japan that every time uh, something valuable breaks, like a vase, they put it back together using gold instead of glue. And so the more it breaks, the more valuable it becomes. And so the more we have been through in our lives, the more pain we have not just endured, but recovered it from to become whole again, the more valuable we are to society and the more we realize the value to the life we still have. So that's what I wanted to tell you about. And if it can help any of you in any way, um, then I'm glad for it. Okay, let's see what we got going on here. What does everybody want to know about? All right, let's go to, um, let's see. So Janos tells me that my mom's extraskeletal osteosarcoma is a rare type of bone cancer. Um, yes, that grows isolated from the bone and the muscle, which she um which she fought for all, almost all last year, came back after a negative test before Christmas. Phew. Um, she has only a one centimeter lump now but it grows rapidly. Wow, that's amazing. Um, she's going to have surgery very soon. I'm wondering if you can recommend anything to her before and after surgery. First of all, I'm so sorry your mom's been going through this, Janos, and uh, I'm so glad that her body's been fighting back with all the treatments. She's coming back from it, um, and it sounds like she's doing overall as well as you could possibly hope for, right? Um, so I'm glad that it's down to a centimeter and they're gonna go after it. What else would I recommend? I would actually recommend you get a full goodbye autoimmune protocol because your immune system, number one, helps you fight cancer, all right? They found uh, John Hopkins, even cruciferous vegetables alone kill cancer cells in vitro. No other food killed cancer cells. They're like, no, not broccoli, right? So number one, I'd be all in on that. Um, number two, it optimizes recovery. So when people have surgeries or procedures and they're on my protocol, every single time, when they go back in to see their doctors, their doctors tell them, you look like you've been healing for six months, not a week or two. So I would say both of those things to optimize her health and her ability to keep healing. And I also recommend tons of hugs and I love yous as well. All right, let's see. Um, Missy wants to know, I've been on the GLP for eight months. My blood work showed a low globulin, which was previously normal. Does it mean I'm not getting enough protein? If not, was it indicate I don't have liver or kidney disease? So I actually don't know because I haven't seen the whole test. Um, I can tell you that people don't get low protein if they're doing the goodbye lupus protocol, if they're doing it correctly. So you do have to make sure that you're eating enough. People often will tell me I'm hyper nourishing or doing the goodbye lupus protocol, but they're not even measuring the food intake. They're having like one smoothie a day. So I don't know if you've really fully been doing it. I also don't know why you've been doing it for so long um, or what you're fighting for. So sometimes the illness you have could be a part of it. Um, sometimes it's just one test and you take another test and it's fine. Uh, there are other, uh, there would be a protein level in your blood, an albumin level in your blood. All of those show your blood protein levels. Um, but even so, if the only one was globulin. I just don't know. I would retest it. Um, and if it's fine, good. But if you have an issue, you haven't, able, haven't been able to solve in eight months, maybe it's time to actually see me so I can make sure you're doing all this right because it's a long time. Um, all right, let's see here. Let's go down to Instagram. Hi, Instagram. All right, let's see here. Good to see you, Lisa. Hi, Olive Orange. 
Is it I love orange? It's olive orange. Uh, Jahalbal, good evening from UK. Hi, Pilates loyalty. Let's see if we get to a question. All right. Jilly Dilly wants to know. Can't say it any other way. Jilly Dilly. Uh, 88 wants to know, what does a high alkaline phosphatase mean in blood work? Um, my liver's fine, but maybe my bones are the issue. It really depends. So here's the thing about the different liver en enzymes, is that liver enzymes are responsible for digesting things, right? That's what enzymes do. And so oftentimes you can get one test where there's an abnormality in one of the liver enzymes and it's not through the roof, but it's just kind of a, a little bit off. And all it really means is your liver's chewing on something and it's not a problem. So oftentimes if there's just one enzyme that's out and your ALT, AST is normal and just the ALP, or maybe ALP and AST are normal and just the ALT. But if it's just one that's slightly out of range, normally doctors just ignore it. Your liver was chewing on something, maybe a medicine, maybe a supplement, I don't know. And it goes back to normal. So if it's not largely out of range and it's just one, I would just say, don't worry about it, retest it. Um, if it's widely out of range, then your doctor should be notifying you about what you need to look into. Um, but in general, minor fluctuations in uh, liver enzymes are not something we worry about. Um, normally, it's just a function of the liver doing its job. So uh, sometimes when there's, when there's actual liver disease, you'll have all of the markers will be elevated and they will continue to be elevated and they'll be elevated a significant amount, not like five, four or five but much, much higher. Then we start to investigate what are the causes. Most common cause is fatty liver disease that's actually caused by um, bad diets. So high sugar intake, processed foods, fats, things like that. Uh, used to be that people would only get that kind of liver inflammation from alcohol back in the old days. So we just called it, you know, alcoholic liver disease. But now that diet is actually the primary cause of this problem, we have to call it non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which is caused by diet. But it doesn't sound like that's what you have with one abnormality. And I don't even know how abnormal it is. It might not even be a big deal. So ask your doctor. Okay, let's see here. I do my best, but I, I can't, if I can't look at your labs and see everything happening with you, I can't give you all the answers. All right, let's see what else is on the Instagram. Hello, KB Buffalo. Thank you for all loyalty. Let's see. Um, Kristen N, can your protocol help with urea plasma? Uh, are you talking about blood urea nitrogen? I'm actually not sure what you're asking me about. If it is BUN, like blood urea nitrogen, then yes, if it's high, it's from kidney issues. And my protocol has been very effective at reversing kidney disease, but I'm not sure what you're asking me. Um, and Mar Miranda 6548 ever does uh, hypernourishment help with osteoporosis while taking prednisone. So one of the side effects of prednisone, and that's, this is one of the problems with using medicines, right, is we always have to weigh risks and benefits. If you need prednisone because you have an autoimmune disease that could be killing you, then you take it. And then there's going to be the risk the side effects. One of them is that it can cause bone loss. Um, I don't know how effective nutrition is in the moment fighting against that. I've never tested Here's people on prednisone with hypernourishment and on prednisone without it and testing bone loss over time. So if I don't know, I don't make it up. I'm not sure. Um, but what it can do is prevent bone loss in general. If you're eating a hypernourishing diet and you're doing strength training to keep your muscles strong, that will maintain and help bone density. But yes, if you're on prednisone for a very long time, it does tend to very much weaken the bones. It's very common. I've seen people who, you know, especially people who've been on prednisone every day, for years and years, they often need hip replacements and things like that. Uh, if you need it just sometimes, not usually the case, but um, but yeah, I, I don't know if, it, if it'll like mitigate the effects of it while taking prednisone. I don't know, can't hurt, can't hurt. All right, let's see, Facebook. Um, Robin wants to know, I've been given tinctures and vegetable glycerin by my naturopath. I'm supposed to take three tablespoons a day. Is this not a vegetable glycerin okay to take on the goodbye lupus protocol? Uh, I don't know. See, this whole tincture idea, I don't know what that stuff does. Will vegetable glycerin hurt? Three tablespoons a day is a lot, actually. Usually when people are taking some kind of homeopathic tincture, it's like a drop or two. It's kind of an intense amount. Um, but I don't know. I've never tested this. So it'll be one of those things where if you feel like this tincture is so helpful, that's kind of like a medicine where you're going to just take it and see what happens. Take it and see what happens. 
Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I wish I did, but I, I don't have, if I haven't tested it, I never make it up. So I just don't know what the impact will be. Hi, Sherry. Glad you're here to listen. Let's see. Um, okay. All right. Let me find another Facebook one and then I'll get back to YouTube. All right, let's see. Okay, uh, Catherine wants to know, can good by autoimmune disease protocol or good by lupus protocol help epilepsy? My friend's sons are eight and four and has, has had seizures and the other is epilepsy as well, hasn't had seizures. Yes, absolutely. Uh, we had a client who was actually, he was my husband's client back in the day, really just wanted to get really fit. And so my husband put him on his plant-based bodybuilding program protocol. Um, and uh, what happened was that not only did the guy get all his results, he lost body fat and got strong, but he had had a seizure disorder for many years and it went away. And he was able to get off of the seizure medicine and even get his driver's license back, which those of you who have epilepsy know that that can take a long time before they say you're clear enough to get your license back. And he was doing really well. And then years later, he just decided like, yeah, I wonder what would happen if we just add some meat back. And the moment he added meat back, he had a seizure. So it was actually a full study of looking at how really aggressively using hypernourishment and even as part of a plant-based diet, not only got him the physical results he want, but got rid of the seizures and adding back just meat brought the seizures back. So that was very interesting. Sherry. Hello, Sherry. Good to see you here. Um, if someone is holding on to past hurt, anger, or regret that they kept inside and never vocalized in a relationship, is it possible to overcome and release those emotions without discussing them with the other party involved? Or is it best to discuss with them to understand your point of view? I want to get it off my mind, out of my life, but not guilt or hurt anyone. So what you're talking about is forgiveness work, which we're going to be doing soon in my rapid recovery group. But um, whether or not you tell the other person that you are injured really depends on what you want out of the relationship. So sometimes it's a person that's out of your life and you never want to see them again, in which case you don't have to say it to them. Uh, sometimes people will write an email they don't send, uh, but they write it out and then they say it out loud. Sometimes people will say it to a picture, have people put a picture on a chair um, and yell at it. Um, sometimes it's someone that you want to be really close with and it's getting in the way of your intimacy, in which case it is important to talk about it and say, you know, hey, um, I love you and you matter to me and I've been holding on to an old hurt and I really need for you to understand. Um, would you be willing to just listen and let me get this off my chest? Um, that's usually a starting point. Um, you expressing your own pain does not guilt or hurt other people. It's a really important point. And I just saw that at the end of your sentence. If somebody hurt you, whether they meant to or not, you saying ouch does not is not an act of you trying to manipulate or guilt them. That's not fair. If I I've never punched anyone, but if I if I punch somebody in the face by accident, I was just trying to like, I don't know, work on my boxing skills. And then they walk by and I punched them in the face by accident. And they went, ow, holy crap, that hurt. Are they manipulating and guilting me and hurting me? No, they're just expressing how it felt for me to clog them in the face with these strong guns of mine, right? Saying ouch is not an attack on another person. It's expressing your feelings. Now, sometimes the person did it on purpose. And if that's the case, you really, and you want them in your life again, you need to be able to say, when you do this, it causes me great pain. I've been in pain for years because I was afraid to tell you but I want to be closer and I need you to know about this. If they care about you, they're going to care about that and they'll answer. Um, but a lot of times what I find is it's accidental. People don't realize how they hurt people. And if they don't get the feedback, they keep hurting people. So really it depends on what they did, who they are, what kind of relationship you want to have, um, whether or not they're still alive or whether or not they're still old enough to be able to, you know, sometimes people like they're geriatric already. There's just so many different factors but I think the biggest factor that would be universal for everyone is that you never hurt someone else by expressing your own pain. If somebody hurts you on purpose or by accident, you're allowed to say, ouch, this hurt me and let them know. 
All right, let's see. Um, back to Insta. All right. Oh, thanks, finally, Free46. Um, not to shape 31. Great to see you too. Does the protocol help autism? Yes, actually, we have had uh, we have had cases where people have done our protocol uh, not for autos, to autism, but people with autism and arthritis did our program and had incredible results for the autism. We had a 17 year old who did my rapid recovery group with his mother's help. It's very difficult often for people with autism to change their diet, so it was really remarkable. Uh, to watch it happen. Um, the mom did all of the, the feeding and interacting for him. But what we found is at the end of the program, not only was his rheumatoid arthritis gone, but his autism was dramatically better. She said he was communicating better, more social, more interactive. It was a really beautiful thing. People with autism uh, often are very sensitive to food. That's why there's been studies done showing that they react to things like food colorings, right? Where food colorings, processed items. But what I have found is that plant-based eating and hypernourishment is really incredible for helping people with different kinds of brain issues, autism, including, uh, as well as like uh, ADHD, depression, even schizophrenia. So what the nourishment that goes into your mouth, it doesn't just go down into the body, but it, it goes up into your brain too. And if you're eating things that are unhealthy, your brain's malnourished or or can be harmed by it. If you are nourished, your brain is nourished too. So it's always a good thing to do. The hardest part is just working with them on getting the food in. There's actually a special kind of um, social workers and therapists who specifically help with getting folks with autism to be able to eat better because often they get very stuck on just certain foods depending on how severe they are. So there's always hope and there's always benefit and there's always better health. All right. Um, the Patricia Madigan wants to know, hi, Dr. G, does your protocol help against nail and scalp psoriasis? Absolutely. Absolutely. I've helped people reverse and eliminate psoriasis in their scalp and nails as well as other body parts. I'll get this one other one because it's a quick one. Um, says, um, from, uh, let me see. L Lady 49. I've been doing hyper nerd, uh, nutrition and I noticed my urine is neon yellow. Is that okay? Uh, yeah. So neon yellow urine is usually caused by B12. So uh, it's not the nourishment, uh, but the uh, B12. So people will get that really super bright yellow urine, either from a B12 supplement, or if you really are down with nutritional yeast, and that happens to be fortified with B12, it can also make a very bright neon yellow urine and it's perfectly fine. All right, let's go back to, back to YouTube. Hi, Julia Shearer, nice to see you. Um, all right, Matt Mark wants to know, um, I wanna guide my parents in their 70s through the Goodbye Lupus Protocol. What are typical risks to look out for? Um, so I'm guessing that your parents are really sick. So usually there's much higher risk to not doing my program than to doing my program. Uh, it's not like you give vegetables to elderly people and then terrible things ensue. Um, usually the vegetables actually are the best thing you ever did for them. So remember that it, it's a protocol, but it's, it's vegetables. So usually just good things. Um, so there's not risks to look out for, but you do want to make sure, maybe check with their doctors that they're not on any kind of water restriction. I don't know if they have heart failure or kidney failure, or they have low blood sodium levels that you need to be careful with and, and adjust water levels to. Um, I don't know uh, if they have any kind of bowel issues. Usually bowels suddenly are extremely happy when you add smoothies. Some people have different kinds of issues where we have to go slower or do other things. So if they are generally healthy, well, not healthy if you're doing the program, right? But if they're like, high blood pressure, um, overweight, arthritis, that kind of stuff, most people are going to just do super well. Um, but if they have any kind of issues with um, water, with metab you know, metabolizing their electrolytes and filtering them effectively, like in kidney failure, um, those kind of things you want to look out for, make sure that they're not overdosing in anything, or if they take any medicines that can interact with food. So for example, a blood thinner called warfarin or Coumadin um, doesn't work properly. 
if you add a lot of vegetables, you have to actually increase the dose. So there's, you know, I would talk to their doctors about any restrictions around uh, food or water, or anything like that. Um, that would be the biggest thing. But most people are are very happy. I actually, uh, I saw a gentleman last week who's in his seventies, and he uh, he wanted to work on blood pressure stuff like that. And he said the reason he met with me is his neighbor had an autoimmune condition, and she she healed herself just using my free resources and my books. I think she read Goodbye Lupus and she, she, maybe she's watching. She uh, watched my, my social media. I give so much away for free. People can follow and heal all the time. So she read my book, followed online and she reversed her, her, her illness. And she's also in her seventies. And she told him when he said, wow, you look good. How are you feeling? She goes, I feel great. She goes, I feel like I'm a lady in my seventies, but I feel like I'm in my thirties. And he said, well, I need to get me some of that. And so that's why he started my program. And he decided to make an appointment with me to make sure he got it all right for his other health conditions. But it was really cool. I need to get me some of that. <laughs> so that's what your parents need. Um, yeah, I was just talking to someone today who, I mean, I've got 11 years on her. and But I feel like when listening to her, I'm like, I feel like you're the one who's 30 years older than me. Um, because of her stress level and her, you know, uh, all of her health conditions going on, um, being nourished and taking care of yourself, both emotionally and nutritionally and hydrating feels good. It feels good. And you got to get you some of that. And so do your parents. So I'm glad you want to help them with that. Okay. Um, all right. So this one, Adriana, you might need to, to get some help. So Adriana, it says, hi, Dr. G, I've been experiencing urgency to urinate and severe pain in my low abs uh, after drinking smoothie and water, about a gallon. How to drink this much without pain? It's not normal to have severe pain from, uh, from drinking, but I would go investigate to see if maybe you have an issue with things like kidney stones or something. Severe pain is usually a warning sign to go to the doctor. I want to know what causes severe A cramp? All right. Cramps happen, right? Severe pain? That's a doctor's visit. Find out what it is. Um, I don't know if you, I, I mean, I can't get into a full workup here, but I would go to a doctor and find out what that is. Um, typically, it's not that, it's your symptom that makes me say that. All right. Um, I, I already see people are like, oh my God, oxalates. No, some people are prone and it could be a stone. Most people actually have their stones go away when they do this program. My husband used to get kidney stones back before he was plant-based because even though he ate tons of salad and he was always drinking a gallon of water, he ate tons of meat all day long back in the day before he knew he could build more muscle without it. Right. Um, and he used to get kidney stones, extremely painful, switched to fully plant-based eating with hypernourishment has not had one stone. So uh, for most people, it fixes the problem, but I don't know what you're doing. I don't know how much you're doing. I don't know what the rest of your diet is. I don't know what your health conditions are. All I know is it, severe pain is a doctor's visit. So go find out what that is. And then we can find out in general people. And, and listen, obviously I'm here to help and support people as much as possible. That's what I love to do. But I really strongly recommend you not look for medical help on the internet uh, in terms of like, if you are severely ill and in pain and suffering, go find out what it is. Um, we have a super supportive free group called Smoothie Shred in Facebook. And I love it. People post their questions and issues and success and motivation being on our program and they're all in it and uh, supporting each other but every once in a while i'll see a picture someone will post a picture of some terrible rash and say does anyone know what this is i'm like you're asking a facebook group go to the doctor get it diagnosed right or they'll say like i can't I, i'm so sick i can't get out of bed and i don't know what's wrong does anyone know please please go to the doctor all right you don't have to do all the treatments but doctors can help you find out what you're dealing with. And sometimes the medical treatment is the answer. So please, just because you want to do things as naturally as possible, which I also want to do things as naturally as possible, don't avoid medical care because that also can lead you down the wrong path to, or could prevent you from getting very important help um, that you need right there in the moment. Uh, the Western world of medicine does have some pretty cool, amazing things it can do for people. Uh, just doesn't know how to make you healthy, right? I can make you healthy. And hey, I still practice medicine. Uh, I just try to make sure that whatever I use for medicine is just a tool and as temporary as possible while we actually work on creating the health and happiness someone wants in their life. But 
uh, don't, don't stay home and try to figure it out online. Go and find out what it is. And if the doctor says, here's what it is, um, then you get to decide what you want to do for the treatment. Where if you're like, you know what? Perfect. It makes sense. I'm going to go home and do my goodbye lupus protocol and fix this versus like, oh no, my kidneys are failing. Uh, which I don't think that's what you have, Adriana. I'm just giving an example. Oh no, my kidneys are failing. I better take this medicine while I do the goodbye lupus protocol, right? Like you need to get the information so that you can make the best decisions possible about your health. I worry when people are very sick, they've got severe pain and they're not going to find out what's wrong. Go check it out, okay? I met someone not that long ago who literally, uh, she, uh, she had uh, appendicitis and her appendix burst and she didn't go to the hospital. She could have died, but she had this weird structural abnormality where it burst into her intestine instead of out into her gut. So if it had burst outward, then all of the fecal matter and everything would have gone into her body and she would have died of sepsis. But somehow she had this miraculous defect where it burst inwards and she was able to survive and be okay. I've never even heard of that, but thank goodness. So severe pain, hospital visit. Can't get out of bed. You don't know what's wrong with you. You've got rashes all over your body. It's never been diagnosed. Get it diagnosed, right? Then when you know what you have, you can come back to the Q&A or you can make an appointment with me and we can go, okay, let's see what we can do to attack this to make sure you don't need medicines or you can minimize them, et cetera, okay? Please do be safe with your lives. Your life matters. Your life matters. Take all the help, right? Get all the information and then choose which advice you want to follow. That part is a lot better, a lot wiser, a lot safer. I want all of you to be safe and well. Um, aw, this one's very sweet. Uh, Jackfruit Wonton says, drinking my smoothie and watching New Zealand. Thank you for healing my life from mental and physical illness. That is super, super sweet. And I'm very happy uh, to see that. See, purpose makes me happy. Um, I'm so glad you're doing well. And one day I want to see New Zealand. I have looked at pictures and videos. It looks incredible. Um, let me see. All right. So Andrea says, I've been doing, I've been doing hyper nourishment for 11 whole food plant-based. I don't know if that's 11 months, whole food plant-based. My psoriasis initially got worse and now it's getting better. Have you experienced anyone healing psoriasis on a hyper nourishment? I love you. Think you're blessing. Oh, thank you. Um, yes, absolutely. Um, the people who I've worked with that have healed psoriasis have all been in rapid recovery. Uh, it's very common for things to kind of spike initially and then come down that's what we call the detox period people argue about whether or not it's a good word to use i don't really care what the word is but the initial period of healing where sometimes people feel like their symptoms actually get worse or they feel flu-like and exhausted we call that the detox period and oftentimes in that first period symptoms can spike and then when you keep going then they start coming down and so that's great hyper nourishment alone plus plus uh cooked food um I don't really have cases like that because like I said, most people by the time they come and see me for psoriasis, no, actually that's not true. I have had wellness appointments where people did have some cooked food still and their psoriasis did get better. But the ones that have really had quick and rapid results have, have all done rapid recovery, which would be um, the nutrition in that program would be the good autoimmune disease protocol where you're doing the, um, the nutrition and the emotional work. I have worked with so many people with psoriasis where when they have stress, first thing, the rash comes back, you know, whether it's in the scalp or, or behind the ears or whatever, that there's like their skin is their check engine light. So just be aware of it and make sure that you're doing everything it takes to get yourself uh, as healthy as possible, psychologically, sleep wise, nutrition and everything. Glad you're doing better. It's super, super cool. All right, let's see back down. Let's go over to Instagram. All right. L. Rowers wants to know acidic diet. How does that play into inflammation? So, so if you're asking about like acidic versus alkaline diet, sometimes people get confused because they think an acidic diet means that you're eating acidic foods. Like a lemon is acidic, right? But it's not the case. Um, what they find is that if your body is in an acidic state, that is more uh, that that there's poor health, and when you're in an alkaline state that you have better health. And so the way you get an alkaline state 
is that you eat alkaline foods, which are plant foods. So animal products, processed foods, sugars, they all create a more acidic body. Um, whereas alkaline foods, fruits and vegetables create a more alkaline body. One of the easiest ways you can see that is in the urine actually. So oftentimes when I first meet someone, their urine pH is like a six, maybe six and a half. If you're thinking like seven is neutral, that's water. They got some acidic urine. Usually when people have been on my program and they get tested, they're seven and a half or eight, they are super alkaline. So, um, so when you're in an alkaline state, usually they, you're in a healing state as well. That usually then leads to the question of what about alkaline water? Um, I don't, it's not necessary if you have an alkaline diet. If you have an alkaline diet and your water is neutral, you're still going to be alkaline. If you have an acidic diet, potentially alkaline water can help. But why, why get the most expensive, like thousands of dollars water system put into your house so that you can eat crappy and try to offset it when you can just drink water from the tap and eat in a way that actually promotes healing. So I've tried alkaline water. I think it tastes wonderful, but I didn't feel any differently. Like a lot of folks who drink it and they're like, wow, I feel so much better. My husband and I, we felt no difference when we switched to a gallon of alkaline a day versus a gallon of regular day. Didn't feel any different, but we're already alkaline. So didn't make any difference. So, okay, let's see another one from Instagram. So Pilates loyalty says, I'm getting so hungry after two full Vitamix smoothies. How do you feel about eating apples and oranges in addition to smoothies before dinner? Um, I don't have any feelings about it. Um, personally, if you're asking how I feel about it, I don't like snacking on fruit. I know I'm a weird anomaly, but I would much rather eat any kind of vegetable over eat fruit. I just, what can I say? I'm just not a sweet person. Uh, I don't, I just don't go for sweets. So I'd rather have some celery and peppers, even a tomato. Like I've always preferred vegetables. So personally, I would just eat vegetables. But if you like fruit and you want to eat some, that's fine. It really depends also on your results. So I don't know what your goals are, but if you are active, which your Instagram name implies maybe you are, then you're going to eat more naturally. And if you're hungry, it just means eat more. If you're trying to heal a disease, I usually say eat more of the on protocol foods, right? Because hypernourishment is an intentional overdose designed to accelerate the healing potential for the body, right? You're giving yourself the ingredients that your body uses to repair itself at high enough doses to actually feel differently. That's why it's so amazing how well it works. If you're already feeling great, doesn't matter what else you add. If you're trying to aggressively get yourself healthy, then, then a better choice to add more nutrition would be to have a salad instead or other vegetables rather than to have the fruit. Okay, let's see here. Go back over Facebook. Okay, so Facebook user, this one might cover me up. It's big. Yep, we just got we just got my my lips and up. <laughs> it's like the Facebook calls I do. <laughs> uh, not basically the FaceTime calls I do with people. I swear sometimes I'm seeing up someone's nose the whole time with no eyeballs. All right. Uh, hi, Dr. G. After completing goodbye autoimmune disease and adding back in the other foods, is it okay to add back in nuts and seeds daily? I want to stay mainly raw besides soy, yogurt, and tofu. Would they be recreational because of fat? Also, after goodbye autoimmune, do we still need three tablespoons of flax daily? Okay, I'm going to take this away so you can see me again. Oh, my God, a neck. Okay, so if you have reversed everything, so the reason you would step down from the goodbye autoimmune protocol would be because you got your results and you're feeling great, which is wonderful. And part of step down is absolutely adding back nuts and seeds, no problem. Uh, usually early on, people like to offset that with the high omega-3 just to make sure that they're not adding back too much inflammation too quickly. But once you've been healthy for six months or more, you don't even have to think about it. You can cut back to the handful of flax seeds a day or like, you know, one to two tablespoons and, um, and have a handful of nuts or seeds and you're fine. So the reason that the nuts and seeds are out in the good vitamin protocol is we're trying to get omega-3 up relative to omega-6 as quickly as possible. And even though they have a much better ratio than things like animal products, the ratio is still in the wrong direction. And we're just trying to load you up with omega-3 as quickly as possible. Once you're good, feeling great, nuts and seeds are fine. I eat them. I do not measure them and they have never harmed me. Um, but during the healing process, we have seen it cause problems for some people, which is why we don't use it then. Okay, let's see. All right, Catherine wants to know, 
Um, I'm doing the autoimmune protocol for eight weeks now. I have no plan of stopping. My recurrent miscarriage doctor is recommending I do intralipid infusions, soy oil, and egg yolk. Have you ever had anyone try this? What do you think? No, I haven't, and it's terrifying. I I, I do not understand uh, what that why. I would ask them. Can I see? What is it based off of? If your doctor is recommending it, they read something somewhere. Ask to see what the studies are. But um, I have not seen a need to do anything like that to help people recover from fertility issues. The nutrition works. Nutrition lifestyle optimizes people's health. And we have had so many people who could not get pregnant, able to get pregnant. We had somebody in our smoothie shred group post a photo of their baby. And it was their fourth child. And the first one they had without needing to have treatments done uh, to be able to get pregnant. Every, they did IVF for every other one. And then after doing my program, naturally got pregnant. Uh, we've had that happen so many times. Now, I'm not saying that's going to fix every issue, but I've never heard before of uh, giving somebody IV soy oil and egg yolk trying to fix their health. I mean, that would really go the opposite way. I mean, it, those are inflammatory items. So... Yeah, uh, my my impression is that that sounds very, very scary. That's what my impression is. All right, let's see here. All right. Uh, Rija Zahid, is it okay to take vitamin K with green veggies? I don't see any reason to do that. I've never needed to take vitamin K. All right. Um. Tanya's creatinine is 29. Can I take spinach in my smoothies? No. Creatinine is 29. You're in kidney failure and uh, you should be working with me directly. I Listen, I do as much as I can to tell all of you what to do for free to help as many people as I can. And sometimes, like if your organs are failing, it's not safe to not get the right support. Um, if your creatinine is really 29, uh, you're in some serious trouble right now, and we need to get you healthy as quickly as possible. This is like rapid recovery level need for help, but at minimum, uh, get on a schedule for an appointment so we can help you out. But no, uh, definitely not spinach. Um, let me see. All right. And Shirley wants to know, how can I work on the issue of not being lovable and feeling not worthy all my life? Please advise. Oh, Shirley. Shirley, I love you. Um, this is... so. Uh, my book, Goodbye Autoimmune Disease, is a good place to start. Uh, the way we feel about ourselves in terms of our own value and self-worth is usually determined between the ages of three and five. Unless something traumatic happens later, sometimes it can be shaken. But usually by five years old, we've, we've decided, am I lovable? Am I smart? Am I capable? Am I worthy? Are other people trustworthy? Are all people bad? Right? So how we feel about ourselves and about the world, we usually have decided by five based on other people's influences and words and actions. So it is not that any person was born unlovable. I have never once seen a baby and gone, eh, not that one. That one's not lovable. Never, <laughs> never, right? So if you were taught either directly or indirectly that those things were true by the environment you grew up in, that means it was taught by other people who did not have the ability to give you the love you needed to see yourself. So it's not that you're unlovable. It's that the people whose job it was to show you how lovable you are, they were unable to do so because of their own deficiencies, their own problems. This is where good therapy work comes in. We do a lot of work in this in my rapid recovery group. Um, I see people on my right here in the, in the, in the live right now, we're in my rapid recovery group. Like you're not getting enough of my voice in the group. You need more. <laughs> um, but, but uh, we work on that every day. We work on emotional health every day in the group. Um, but I also write about it. My book of autoimmune disease. And I also recommend therapy. Cognitive behavioral therapy is a great type of therapy that helps you address certain thoughts and beliefs that are creating depression. Um, I, I'm trained in many different kinds of therapies. In addition to being a medical doctor, um, I find that helping people overcome these negative thoughts and beliefs about themselves um, not only makes them happier, but it makes it so it's easy to just eat well, right? Because you don't need food to serve an emotional purpose. But if you walk around feeling that way, it's not because it's true. It's because you have to unload and get rid of some malware, right? So the brain is the, is the hardware, that's our computer. And then what's been loaded into the brain 
by our education through life and other people, that's the software. And sometimes the people who are supposed to give us the best updated software, they put some malware in there instead. And now we need to debug. And I'm sorry, I went to Carnegie Mellon. I'm taking this too far. But we need to debug the system and we need to get the software running properly. OK, maybe there needs to be some updates. Maybe there's some updates that we can do. But that takes daily work. I do the daily work in things like my rapid recovery group. Um, but you can also try seeing a CBT therapist and then asking for homework so you can start doing the daily work because it's up to you now to release this belief that a small child thought was true because the adults in her life weren't able to be what she needed, not because it's actually true. Okay, there's that one. It's going deep in here. I hope that helps you, Shirley. All right. Um, Marjorie Hart wants to know, going between goodbye lupus protocol and maintenance has been tough. It's the oil or noodles that might be in a restaurant's veggie soup that I grapple with. I eat at restaurants twice per week. Can you help? Yeah. You're not supposed to go between goodbye lupus protocol and maintenance. You're supposed to be going from goodbye lupus protocol to step down, right? Maintenance means I've been healthy for six months or more. So if I eat a little oil, it's fine. That's where I am. I have not had a relapse in 18 years. All right. In October, it will be 19 years. Oh, my God. When I get 20 years lupus free, we're going to have a party. <laughs> but, uh, but you know, this is uh, what you want to do is step down. So you do the goodbye lupus protocol. You become symptom free. You feel good. And then if you go to restaurants, either one, if you always go twice a week to the same restaurants, call and ask to speak to the chef and tell them what you need. They will make it for you. My husband and I love to go out. And, um, and so we have these places that, you know, we want to go somewhere beautiful and sit and hang out and be romantic, right? And oftentimes the salad place, although usually if we go out, we go to Salada, it's a salad place. But if we want to go somewhere romantic, beautiful environment, usually it's not serving up the food that we eat. So we just called them years ago, told them what we wanted. And now whenever we want to go, my husband gives them a couple of weeks notice and they give us like five course fine dining and it's plant based, healthy, delicious, like absolutely incredible. Um, you get just got to tell them. So if you, I had a lady who she told her diner that she goes to on a regular basis. She walks to that diner. She told them and they now have a salad on the menu named after her. She comes in and just orders. I won't say her name. But she just orders a Sally salad, you know, and they're like, oh, there we go. We know what it is. Ask for what you need. Um, I don't know why you're going to restaurants twice a week, but if you are and it's the same ones, tell them so they can have something nice for you. But even if you don't, most restaurants can steam vegetables, give you a baked potato, all that stuff's on step down. Get a side salad, throw some lemon on there or some guacamole if they have it. Right. There's so many ways that you can do that without having to have oils. Um, you can just ask for what you need. And I think that's one of the most important things that people seem to struggle with is just being willing to ask for what they need. If you ask in the moment, it might give them a little bit of stress. But all right, it's their job. They work in a restaurant. They can get through it. Right. If you ask ahead of time, then you really get to make everybody happy. But yeah, you, you're choosing the oil. You're choosing that stuff. You don't have to. You can ask for better. Um, so, or you can choose a better spot to eat. So, yes, there's always a way out. You know, um, I was just coaching someone right before I came on live. Um, she was telling me an issue she had. I gave her an idea for a solution. She batted it away with an excuse. I gave her another idea. She batted it away. And I said, okay, so um, you're not really looking to solve this then, right? Because if you're looking to solve a problem and you're determined to solve it, solutions show up. But if somebody feels hopeless and helpless, then when I do offer solutions, they usually bat them away like it's a, a fly bothering them. So make sure that you're trying to solve the problem. Is the problem that you don't know how to do maintenance or is the problem that you're unwilling to ask for what you need or at unwilling to ask for what you need from the restaurant or your friends or anything? It might be that if you're trying to solve the wrong problem, the problems tend to stick around. So make sure that you're solving the right problem. OK, let's see here. Let's go back to Instagram. Unfortunately, I can't show comments on Instagram, but that's okay. I can read them. All right. KB Buffalo wants to know, does soaked chia seeds give you the same benefits as ground up chia seeds? Um, well, even if you soak them, you still need them to be ground up. So you need them ground up per order. If you soak them first or you grind them first, it doesn't matter. Um, so you can add chia seeds to your smoothie. They will grind up if you have a high power blender and then they will automatically be soaking in the smoothie mixture. So they are soaked. Some people find digestion wise 
they feel better if they soak the chia seeds and then put them in the blender. Um, so that, that might be something that you can try. Um, S, I'm trying to see what this is. SJF Fulvin, any issues with high oxalates or smoothies? Not typically. I mean, the issues with oxalates, so I, I've done a lot of videos on this, um, and I already mentioned oxalates are caused by usually dehydration and high meat intake um, and having acidic urine. That's another one since we already talked about acidity today. Um, so the reason why people being on smoothies and eating plant-based diet tend to get rid of their kidney stones in spite of having more oxalate rich food is because they're on an alkaline diet and an alkaline diet uh, keeps the urine flowing. If you have an acidic diet, it causes the oxalate stones to precipitate out and form into stones right? So as long as you're eating alkaline, you actually should be protected against stones. There are some exceptions. There are some people who have a genetic reason why that they will always get oxalates, in which case um, don't eat spinach um, or because of kidney failure or because of, you know, gastric bypass or other issues. Although I've seen those folks do it just fine and not have problems, but very rare exceptions. Most of the time it actually just helps with it. Okay. HHH FFF. Ted zero 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 zero. It's like you just your like Instagram name. <laughs> uh, have I treated anyone with pods and did they heal? Yes, actually, there is a there's a, a video from someone named Rosie on my YouTube channel that healed with pods. Um, I answered that. Um, all getting lots of love from people. Um, thank you, Dave. Thank you, Liberta. Thank you, S.J. Bullman and Liberta and. Wellness by Marina and Lisa Lou, thank you, thank you for all the hearts and love. Um, let's see, oh, just lots and lots of love. Okay. Um, Mackie Mac, I need your help. Lupus is really affecting my livelihood. Dr. G, I've been diagnosed with lupus, fibromyalgia, bilateral DVTs, bilateral PE, pulmonary arterial hypertension. Ah, uh, hey, Mac, Mac, you're in a really tough place, and I'm sorry to hear it, and I'm also glad you're here. Let's do it, all right? If you are on blood thinners, which I'm guessing you are, if you've had bilateral DVTs, make sure it's a blood thinner that doesn't uh, interact with your food. If you are taking Coumadin and your doctor refuses to change it, then you're going to need them to adjust your medicines to go with your INR. Other than that, let's go all in. Uh, if you want aggressive help right away, I know my husband can start a folic rapid recovery program uh, pretty much right away. I think as early as, uh, next week, but, um, but, and I can, I can start one at, I think, uh, last I checked, I think end of March, but we also have a rapid recovery group starting then. But if you need to start right away, like let's get you treated. Cause it sounds like, uh, you're really suffering, but start where you can start now, like get my resources, get goodbye lupus, Get my new recipe book, Goodbye Lupus, Hello Delicious. There's no reason why you can't start right away and start feeling better right away. I hope uh, I hope you're feeling better soon. Okay, let's see. All right, let me rapid fire over here and get back to Facebook. All right. I'm trying to find it. <laughs> All right, I'll answer this one real quick um, while I'm looking for Facebook. Deb wants to know, what did I do for colonoscopy prep? Colonoscopy prep, so I only do the day before. Um, so I do my normal smoothies and salads up until the day before. And the day before, fresh pressed juices, I did herbal tea and water and all that gross stuff they make you drink to clear out. Um, and I got a round of applause from my GI doctor for having such incredible beautiful bowels. Nobody else wanted to see the picture though. I really wanted to show everyone how gorgeous my intestines are. And nobody in my family is interested in looking at my intestines. It's just very insulting. They're beautiful. <laughs> um, let me see. Um, oh, this is cool. Mamela says, thank you for these sessions. Watching has helped me with my heart failure and PMR. My labs are recently in the normal range after only three weeks. That is so freaking cool, everybody. Like, it's awesome. It's so cool. Um, very, very exciting. Everybody celebrate. I love when people celebrate together, especially publicly. It's so cool. Thank you, Crystal. All right, here we go. Um, Nelda so wants to know, can people get off of dialysis? Sometimes. 
it really depends on the person. I've absolutely helped people. Uh, I've published getting someone off the transplant list. I've helped multiple people get off of dialysis. Um, it really depends on where you are. A lot of times by the time I see people, they have 5% of their kidney function left. So I get them healthier. I've had multiple people who had to stay on dialysis, but began urinating again. A lot of people don't realize that when kidney shut down, people stop urinating. I've had multiple people during rapid recovery begin urinating again for the first time in weeks or months. That's amazing. Um, we have, um, you know, so, so it improves. If your kidney function can get better, then on my goodbye autoimmune protocol, it will get better. How much better it can get, that is highly variable. It depends on the level of scar tissue and destroyed kidney, right? If the kidney is destroyed and scarred over, that's not coming back. Now, what I have found is doctors overestimate how much that is. So oftentimes people will tell me, the doctor said, you will never get better. Your only chance is transplant. And yet they do. So I never want to estimate it. I just want to go for it. And we go for it. And then we see how much function can get back. And I have definitely had people get off of dialysis and other folks who just have been able to cut back from dialysis. I recently had someone who had three day a week dialysis and now she's down to one day a week, four hours. So we just get as much improvement as we can. But I don't know that everybody can. Um, it really depends on how you started. I had someone who just is about to start rapid recovery privately um, and actually with my husband. And uh, and so uh, even if he's doing it, I look at, you know, the function levels and, and make adjustments as needed for food. But I mean, her GFR, she's got like seven, eight percent of her kidney function left. So the first question I have was, show me the most recent labs that you've had where you were over 20. So we can see, like, is it possible? Are they inflamed, but they can come back or have they been dead for years? And we're just trying to decrease dialysis. So, you know, um, it's always worth it to get everything you can back. But if you are in dialysis, please work with us because we have to adjust the nutrition based off of your function levels, which I can only know, but based off of your lab tests. So it's just one of those things that, you know, it can be dangerous if you don't get the right amount of oversight because your kidneys are responsible for metabolizing your electrolytes and moderating how much water goes out and how much water goes in. And if they can't do that job, then we have to find a dosage of nutrition that can help you recover without it being an overdose that you can't clear from your system. So it's a science. It is a science and sometimes people need more help, but yes, we do have people get off dialysis. Um, and let's see, Kelly. Yes. I've seen thyroid nodules get better. Let me see if I can throw one more in there. Um, let's see if there's a fast one, a fast one. Does your protocol help with reflux and fatty liver and anemia? Yes, we have had people do all that. There's someone in my group, actually. We are now in day, so we, I just was scoring day 18. But by day, by the first, second week, we had someone who had, whose anemia was already gone. He couldn't believe it. So uh, it really depends on the causes of things, uh, of course. Uh, some people, their acid reflux immediately goes away. Sometimes it initially feels worse because they're overstuffed or whatever. So um, but yes, and fatty liver, usually liver enzymes are normal within three weeks. Um, so we've had fantastic and consistent results with that. Okay. Um, that is what I got for you today. I got some more stuff to do. I got some rapid recovery to work on. I got to give a lot of more love to my uh, rapid recovery group and my clients that are going in there. Um, but I always like to, whenever I can donate some of that love and time to all of you out there who need my support. If my help, if my struggles, if my successes, if my knowledge and my love can help you live a better life, then it means everything to me. So I hope you have a great rest of your week. Take good care of yourself and I'll see you next time. Bye everybody.